are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 3.13.19. Well, we know there's this trend going on, de-dollarization. How important is it? How long is it going to take? And what effect will it have upon precious metals? Well, we're going to find out in a moment. But as always, be a part of the show. Write us any questions or comments about de-dollarization, gold, or anything else that's on your mind. The email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. Well, Gordon T. Long is with us now. Gordon, this de-dollarization has been going on for a while. Oh, yeah, and welcome. So the de-dollarization, it's been happening for a while. What's your take on it? Uh, Kerry, I just put out a thesis paper for this year, which is actually on de-dollarization. And I, so I thought I understood it and I thought I understood what was going on, but it was a real education and eye opener uh, because it's much bigger, happening much faster, and it's more serious. And I knew it was a serious issue uh, than I, I really, really fully uh, appreciate. And um, I'll let you ask questions on it, but the what, what really stood out to me is we have effectively weaponized the U.S. dollar without it's a, it's a clearly a strategy and we can talk about the petrodollar bilateral trade the currency reserves uh, fx reserves uh, exorbitant privilege all these kinds of things but the issue is with with weaponizing the dollar it's u.s sanctions so what we've done with uh we started with the patriot act and then we had this Trading with the Enemies Act, and then we had the International Emergency Economics Power Act, which were ways of setting this up, whether planned or whatever. But a year ago, year and a half ago, we came out with this Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act. <laughs> what a mouthful that one is. But basically what it does is it allows us to declare somebody is an enemy, and therefore we can seize that assets but here's the quick kicker it also says anybody who's work country that's working with somebody we consider an enemy or we've sanctioned they and themselves we can seize their assets and what's what that's done is it's just driven all sorts of countries to start to accelerate moving away from the dollar not that they're enemies but they're trading with countries who have sanctions against them so for example we have sanctions against russia right now mm -hmm. in some degrees china iran venezuela turkey india and even the eu in terms of trade so we've um, I think even Iraq now I think about it but that we have san formal sanctuaries and I'm sure I missed some but those are sanctions but now you say okay there's a lot of countries there but what's happened is you've got all of these other countries such as Qatar, Pakistan, Lebanon, well Syria I think that one I missed has <laughs> sanctions, Libya, Egypt, Philippines who who are tr traders with those countries in a big way and they're they're exposed at any given time that we could start to nail them if you would or seize assets so they're all feverishly writing these bilateral trading agreements amongst themselves and with the sanctioned countries so that they don't use the dollar they'll trade with what whatever currency, whether it's going to be the yuan, the, the Russian ruble or, or, or whatever. And, and, and the rate at which this is changing and they're uh, really concerned about it, the, these, these countries um, is accelerating this. And it's, you know, as you well know more than anybody, you know, the petrodollar itself, separate subject, was what saved the economy, Jack, in the Nixon era the, for the Vietnam War when we said all uh, petro dollars had to, all oil had to be traded in U.S. dollars. That's why we went into Iraq, as you know, when Saddam Hussein said he was going to take it in euros. We went into Libya when he said he, the Gaddafi said he was going to take it in uh, gold. We wouldn't allow it, but that's all changed now because now even the petrodollar has completely uh, collapsed. We're trading it in yuan's, Russian ruble etc and more and more they're breaking down and even Venezuela they're trading in, in the cryptocurrencies etc so the bottom line here Kerry is and I'm going a whole series of other things that are going on that I discovered in my paper is we've been printing dollars like drunken sailors for 30 to 40 years and we have been fortunate because we have basically exported inflation so the rest of the world got stuck with our dollars because they had to have them. Well, they don't need as many anymore. And what are they going to do with them? They're going to return them to the United States because they're an IOU. 
And that's what's beginning to happen. And especially when you see people who are buying our currencies like China, their FX reserves are falling. I didn't mean to get long winded, uh, Gary, but it's 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 just a huge subject. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, can see and it it's happening. getting no press. It's you can getting no see press. It. You know, it's happening as far as these things happening quickly. I'm not so sure because it really destabilized the world to come up with a new reserve currency. They almost have to get the. Uh, the SDRs from the uh, International Monetary Fund. There's really nobody's going to trust yuan's to put the country's reserves in. And if they lose faith in the dollar, then they got to come up with something else. You know, it's it's not exactly. an either or. I don't. I'm not for one moment thinking that we're about to see the dollar lose its reserve currency status. It's this movement which I thought was a glacier move. It's not a glacier mm-hmm. move. It's happening faster. But there's there's the wash that's starting to happen that's not being recognized. The dollar will be the reserve currency until there's a major crisis. And I actually have to believe the dollar will be the last one to collapse yes. in it as there's a flight to safety. And eventually we'll go to some kind of SDR uh, balance, but that's going to be on the other side of a massive crisis that's out in the in the distance. It's I'm more, you know, I, I make my money investing, Gary. I'm worried about the next 24 months and 36 mm-hmm. months. And it's so this 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 dollar issue, where 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 the, the hole here is, we have to understand that the whole world will maybe built on dollars. All those dollars Typically in these countries, what they do is they buy, they don't hold the dollar in a dollar bill. They typically hold U.S. treasuries, which are denominated in U.S. dollars, so they make pretty good interest to hold those as, as a tradable uh, um, FX currency. So, they're, But they don't need as many um, currency reserves. So that actually they're, they're shrinking that way, but they're getting out of the dollar. So it's the issue gets to how – we going to support the growing treasury market and who's going to be buying an already growing requirement for more treasuries and then you have the fact that the social security pool which is full of them now are having to be sold to pay for baby boomers retiring in case we haven't forgot about all of that kind of issue monetization Uh, is ahead uh, right well that's why you're seeing more and more discussion of mmt etc Because effectively, the only way out of this is monetization. But the point I was going to get to with the treasuries is the entire – the issue with the treasuries is besides who's going to buy them and what's going to be the interest rates um, on these is is the entire world's whole basis of what a risk-free debt is, is the 10-year U.S. Treasury bill. And we – as you and I both know, we have – totally mispriced debt or uh, price risk, I meant. So the mis- because the risk free is the 10 years. So if it starts to move because of a dollar shifting, so, you know, as we go into this year, the dollar begins this weakening, the link to the, the treasury is the issue. So we could see the interest rates starting to be pushed up for a different reason. That is the inability to sell more of the treasuries. Am I making sense here, Kerry? Mm, I you? think it... I think uh, you're definitely making sense. I mean, these things just have a way of working out differently than you expect. But, oh, that's you know, that's absolutely you, true. you just never know. You know, like Yogi Berra said, uh, you know, prediction is very difficult, especially about the future, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I, I, one of the things I do know is as logical as I just was, what happens is never logical. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It, it's, it's some some wild card in it. So you, a you can't just you can't just bet on this, or you'll find yourself on the wrong end because of somebody the mm-hmm. government will come out and do something really strange. But it 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 does allow you to 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 watch quite closely what really may be driving things, mm-hmm. as and how they may re, may be really what they're really reacting to, not what you hear on CNBC or not what you're reading in the press. Mm-hmm. They're trying. They're trying to rationalize something they can't figure out. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, well, that's it. I mean, because you know, well, you know, you have an idea of what's going to happen. You never know exactly how it's going to happen. I mean, we were talking for years about about car sales uh, that they had no place to go but down, and it took uh, three, four years for that to happen, Gordon. It finally happened. Uh, last year, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's finally happening. And 
You know, you see every single car manufacturer, if you watch anything on TV, everything's on sale. So as far as de-dollarization goes, we have to then look at precious metals because historically that has been the ultimate safe asset and safe haven asset. And if the dollar is uh, going kaputski, then something uh, something's probably going to be happening with gold. And maybe we're starting to see the beginning moves in precious metals, Gordon. We are. We are uh, the specifically silver, but uh, certainly uh, with gold, mm -hmm. um, it, it's without question we're seeing it a fairly strong bottom, getting mm -hmm. uh, f some false signals of breakouts. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're built. We're 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 building a position that it could really start to move, and when it does move uh, it, geopolitically, it would really be tr tremendous moves. Having said that, Kerry, you you're fighting the establishment here mm. but the most manipulated market in the world is precious metals I, I don't think i'm overstating that strong enough yeah i totally and, agree and, with you and uh you know and, and so that's why if you're talking gold you better be talking the physical not the paper but mm. the 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 issues is it goes back to what we started with don't underestimate what the governments will do and you know and gold and silver and i've I, I was on years i was a major gold and silver bug but i uh, I, what I when I watch what's going on with our government and the kinds of reaction to do, I just believe they'll tax the living hell out of it, and it'll be worse than owning a gun, and uh, that they want to confiscate. Why? What's and, wrong with owning a gun? Owning a exactly, gun. There's exactly. Nothing wrong so with owning a they're, gun. They're, they're, you're going to be considered a financial terrorist if you hold gold or silver. <laughs> I, I don't mean to exaggerate here, but uh, don't underestimate if when you think you're going to make money and it rises up. Um, mm. what kind of back feed there becomes. So, um, and yet there'd be money if you're very, you can be made it because it will have to move up if they can't control it. At some right. point, they won't be able to control it. Mm -hmm. If you're quick and you're clever about it, I, you know, you, you may be able to do all right, but to be highly uh, careful of what I would argue strongly is there's no question that hard assets other right. than just precious metals um, have got a day in the future. Mm-hmm. And now you got to be really careful with how we start defining hard assets because a lot of the whole asset realm has yeah. been so overly priced because of cheap money. You know, whether we're looking at antique cars, whether we're looking at oil paintings, such precious metals or precious gems, rather, um, farmland, all, you know, everybody's been into that for 12 or 14 years now trying to figure out how to protect themselves from a, a devaluation of the dollar um, and, and monetization. So it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough game to protect yourself with. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But and, not impossible. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, so you know, it's it's uh, it's so difficult to figure this stuff out here. Let's face it; uh, nobody knows what's going to be what, here. You know, what's not hard to figure out, Carrie, mm. is if a if a, a small company, let's talk about not a big corporate, a small company, has got a a good business, um, and knows what they're doing. You can understand their balance sheet. You can see where the revenue is, and it's relatively uh, reflation or recession proof. Mm -hmm. um, those are good investments. And there's a lot of those out there owned by baby boomers who are retiring. Yeah. And, but, but when I get into the, and I don't, I don't mean to be harsh. I'm just trying to point something out here. But when I get into the publicly traded securities industry, um, where everybody and their dog is, it's really tough now compared to what it was 15 years ago. But if you step out of that and look and go in other places, it's it's like virgin territory. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they open the door and say, thank you for talking to me. <laughs> it, it's just a whole, di a whole different world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and because I haven't figured out how to, how to really make money on it in a massive way. It, it reminds me of years ago, we used to have mom and pa shops everywhere, um, like, like coffee shops and diners and this sort of thing. Well, all of a sudden, we 
figured out how to automate. Now there's a donut shop, a Dunkin' Donuts on every corner here in New England. Right. Um, and there's a fast food place diagonally across it selling some kind of fast food or whatever. And everybody and their brother either owns, owned a franchise or is part of a franchise chain. We autom- We figured out, the corporations figured out how to make, make that go. But there, there's still a lot of businesses that aren't cookie cutters that are, yeah. that are out there. Uh, to take, I didn't mean to get us off track, yeah. but they, these are these are where the hard assets are, if you would, in my mind today. I think we've actually talked about that once a couple of years back. Yeah, we did talk about it, and I do agree with you. Uh, lots of opportunities there for sure. And Don't, we've never seen opportunities better than right now, Kerry. I mean, yeah. uh, money has never been effectively cheaper than it is right now. Mm-hmm. The problem everybody's got is they're chasing the same opportunities, if you would, public securities, as, a, as opposed to really challenge looking at where the real opportunities are. Mm-hmm. You know, look, at, look at what private equity can't raise money fast enough, right? Yeah. Just look, they got $10 trillion. Where are they, where are they going? Mm-hmm. Where, are they, where are they investing? Why are they raising so much more money? Um, they're not just buying securities in the public stock exchange. Which mm-hmm. they are, by too. But yeah. yeah, obviously, in a, which in is, a massive way. Yeah, which is one reason why they keep going up, of course, right? That's true. We had, I think, one of the times we talked about is the shrinking stock pool, mm. and and what and the the number of actual securities that are out there. It's how much is dropped down, believe it or not, by uh, actually companies that are trading. Um, that haven't went private and the amount of stocks that they have outstanding with all this massive buyback that's reduced the stock pool and the amount of stocks that are taken out of the pool uh, because I won't call insider trading, but they're restricted stock and private equities because they own such a part are considered restrictive stocks. So the the pool of uh, of any money going into the securities industry is is getting it's you have huge amounts of money chasing fewer and fewer opportunities. So, but yeah. that there's a limit to that too. Yeah, something like half the publicly traded stocks have disappeared over the past 15 years. That's and exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so what do they want? Who's going to own all these companies? Is it going to be the uh, the cabal? They own everything, and uh, we're just uh, tenant farmers on it. Yep. <laughs> That's a pretty harsh answer, but I had a from a fairly reliable source that private equity now control or or own two hundred uh, half of the S and P five hundred effectively. Now today we have to really understand what ownership is. We say. Oh, well, ownership is you have equity control or you have a dominant equity position. Well, you can control it with a fairly small equity position, but it's not that. Today, who is really running these companies are the owners of the debt. So mm-hmm. when you're in a boardroom, it isn't just trying to answer to the shareholders. What you have to do is you're answering to those who control the debt because the, we, you can't survive without cheap money and debt. Yeah. Everybody. And so they're the, the whole ones. World. That, they may have the strongest vote in there, but they have the strongest voice. And if you notice right now with private equities, where they're doing is they're when they load up the balance sheet, they're also lending the monies to these to these corporations, okay, who are using it for buybacks. Correct. So so there uh, as a two edged sword. I have a lot of shares, but I also have a lot of power because of the debt. And the first thing they load it up, but then is how do they ma- who's controlling that debt? It's a little convoluted, convoluted. But in there, you'll start to understand um, what's really going on in the public arena. So again, with, with we go back to precious metals because what choice is there really? And we look at uh, what the choices are. There just aren't a lot of choices, but the precious metals aren't going to be a panacea because there's going to be roadblocks put up there. So a lot of black yeah, but that, market. That, that doesn't mean you don't invest in them. I yeah. didn't mean to suggest that. It right. says you need you need you need to really uh, you just don't put it away. You got to really be on top of it, understand mm. what's go, what's truly going on with it, because it'll surge. And I, my opinion is that silver right now is 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 an opportunity. It'll it'll break up, but then they'll try and force it back. So it very it'll become highly volatile. Yeah. Uh, uh... But if you're if you're if you're if you're a trader. Mm-hmm. Uh, away you go. And then, of course, then the whole other issues of the regulatories will get involved in that in terms of taxation or whatever, I expect. So you're thinking hyperinflation? You're thinking dramatic loss in the value of the dollar? I do. I think the dollar is overpriced by anywhere from 40 to 60 percent. But that is not imminent. That is not imminent at all. 
uh, as I said, I think the dollar will be the last to actually <laughs> fall because because we will we will get when the fear mounts, as things start to break down. The flight to safety has traditionally been to the U.S. dollar. I, I still think it will be for all the wrong reasons. Initially, okay? at least. And initially. initially, exactly. Initially, and I, I happen to, and I may be I may disagree, but I still think there's more to run in the stock markets. Yeah, I do. I don't too. think the stock. I don't think the stock. Even though I can, I can go on for an hour of why a recession and the severity of the problem. But I, I, I think we're you know, exaggerate a little bit. Think we're we're almost in a Minsky melt up right now. Yeah. And 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 we saw where the proof is this fall as we started to collapse in 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 October, early November. I was looking everywhere to figure out where the where the central banks were pumping the money in, and it was a bear, mm. and they weren't doing it on, on the surface. On the surface, on the and then surface, we, you know, yeah. we had the 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 Nuchin massacre on Christmas Eve as we hit yeah. our low, and then suddenly the market took off. Now we have the data; you can see the cent China. Our China mm -hmm. was in buying and uh, pumping money and credit at unbelievable oh, yeah, trillion dollars. What about those in, Chinese? Everybody is uh, saying, well, you know, it's going to the yuan, but they've been not exactly been a good steward of their currency, have they? Not at all. They've and, been uh, rec more uh, reckless and, than us, if that's possible. I, I don't know the, the place that worries me more, whether it's China or the EU. Yeah. But either oh, 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 I, the EU is, uh, <laughs> you know, a, remember where the term basket case came from or going to hell in a handbasket was uh, during the French Revolution when they'd uh, off with their heads and they'd have a handbasket waiting to catch the head. And, I had uh, forgot that story. Yeah, so, <laughs> and a basket case. Yeah, right. basket case. So, you know. <laughs> but, so, so we, it, you know, we can talk about the they negatives in America, but it, it, the, the rest of the countries have a worse problem. And the point I'd make here is in the fall when we looked at things falling and in January, it yeah. was China that flooded the money. Yeah, and, you know, we tend madness. To, if EU is tender on tea litro. Japan is not, has never really stopped. So we've, we had this misplaced belief and you and i both agreed that you know that we would never really get to, to um uh, qt quantitative yeah. tightening to any real degree no no and we've clearly we've clearly backed off that and now we're talking about the next hike is not a hike it could be a reduction a reduction of the uh, of the um, of the rates so that lasted nowhere but it, but in the fall that's why we've had this historic stock rise in the first part in the last uh, two and a half months of the of, of the year, because we're right back at, at pumping in the the liquidity into the market. Isn't so this is part of why I I think we're gonna we're gonna increase and as even when it fails and it will because the liquidity is just buying less and less. Okay. Um, so mo here movement. But 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 it's going to stop, and that's when they'll go mm -hmm. to another level, like Japan, and they'll start buying the ETFs All and right. the, et cetera. So let me tell you what my old partner used to tell me. Uh, about things in life, the situation is always hopeless, but never serious. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way I just have to take it here because it's so absurd and it's so impossible. And, you know, it's like worrying about uh, getting struck by lightning, although maybe the odds are a lot higher here. And you can do things about this too. Let's not forget that, Gordon. You have the ability to actually, uh, you know, mitigate these effects to some extent to some extent no but to some extent you do so yeah, well i just go well, back to well, that the well situation said, well, well said i the, think there's so many people because the, the problems are becoming so blatantly obvious that have become like uh, deers in the headlight yeah just they don't and, know and, what to and, do and, and they're afraid of anything and all that. so a uh, bad news was a few years i don't well, 10 years ago, there were very few people spouting some of the issues that were really looming. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like everybody's talking about them. Everybody's so, uh, on the rooftop. Uh, you know, <laughs> caution, caution, danger, Will Robinson, right? Um, you know. <laughs> well, we have, uh, have, we have something we uh, have called uh, strategic investment insights where we target areas that that, that we in, invested at Matt SII. And I can tell you the, 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 the money that we've been able to make in the defense sector has been just it's, it's amazing. It's just, just amazing <laughs> the rate at which things are, are um, have been going up in, not in the bigger ones, but uh, I'll pick on one, Kratos just announced their supersonic uh, drone fighter. 
um, that they can produce for minimal cost compared to, you know, $100 million for a fighter right now uh, and to mass so much, produce it. So much cheaper to kill people. This is a great thing. This is really, <laughs> this is, this is progress, Gordon. Well, we're talking uh, about it, major it, progress. It, it, it is amazing. And if you notice the <laughs> amount of, of military talk that we now see oh, that's going yeah. on, it's almost like we have a new arms race starting to appear too. So I, I see that in, in, in certain parts of the, the, the defense stocks have been that. So then there's, so there are opportunities, Gary, without question. Yeah. Yeah. And um, hey, look at Boeing up until uh, their planes started falling out of the sky. It was a really unbelievable performer, right? I mean, it was yep, spectacular. Ab ab absolutely spectacular. Yeah. Uh, so, on, until Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like, look, uh, these companies now, you know what amazes me, Gordon, is companies have got billions and billions and billions of dollars in their treasury. Billions. And, you know, it, yeah, it's going to be expensive to pay for 400 people or 350 people. And we shouldn't lose fact, sight of the fact that these are uh, human beings who've, uh, you know, who've basically, you know, seen their lives end as a result of what appears to be negligence. Um, so, you know. We really, really need to be a little more empathetic, but it's not a, um, it's not going to be a, um, you know, a life altering event for the company, right? People, uh, I think Buffett would say when there's blood on the streets, the time to buy, right? When everybody's yeah. wearing it right now, I'm not saying buy, Boeing's a buy, but uh, that's an awful lot of deep Deep, deep hole on something that's got 3,000 orders <laughs> pending yeah. on, oh, on the Max uh, Max fleet. Yeah. That, and, oh, it, it may be really troubling here and it may even get a lot worse. Oh, it's going to cost them money. It's, it's gonna, going oh, to yeah. cost them money. And, and, um, but, uh, you know, and right now just on that whole subject, mm -hmm. the rest of the world have shut down mm -hmm. every, every except the FAA. It really stands out if you look at uh, all the airlines who are now grounded Mm -hmm. um, the fleets, but except the FAA on the other other side of it. Um, yeah. But at some point, the facts will come out. And at some point, people are going to realize that Boeing has a future. What people yeah. don't understand is it's a massive defense contractor. Oh, that and uh, <laughs> and their planes have been uh, so successful. It's, um, precisely. Yeah. Their biggest their biggest issue on that subject, Gary, is that uh, Europe and China don't take advantage politically of this to uh, change orders. Because remember, they're in the competitive yeah, uh, airframe well, uh, business. Also, it's a fifty that, fifty market. Really they can't. There is no substitute, and. Um, you know, we don't know the, we can't jump to any conclusions too quickly, um, you know, and hey, it, it just happens. Uh, look, uh, flying on uh, aircraft, it's the uh, safest way to go, as the cliche says. I mean, it really is the safest. There's no question about it. Well, so. you know, things are overdone when the president of the United States makes statements on complexities of aircrafts today. That's when you know all the information's in the market. Yeah, well, he's an expert, though. He's owned, <laughs> he's a, he owns a fleet he's owned, himself. He's owned an airline, so he has the right to make a comment. Yeah, I mean, this isn't exactly an ignoramus here. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the guy I, I, has I knowledge here of from whence he speaks. Oh, yeah, and I happen to actually agree with this issue on complexity. Oh, uh, I have a God. pilot's license, and 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 and, and so uh, it's it's incredible. And anything that can go wrong, you you can't. It's like fixing a car today. You used to be able to fix your car. You can't fix anything. Fix it's all components. <laughs> yeah, it's all electronics. Yeah, no way. You can't do it. It's just a whole no. different a different world. The nope. same with the air airlines. So, so even the the one that uh, the, the most the crash. Like the, the a computer sensor or a computer code is probably at the root of the whole issue, mm -hmm. and they and and they and it's a bug in there. And I think they actually reported that they were having uh, control problems, but they don't know what they can they do about it because the computers are overriding them. It's like how do you get back to manual control? There is that element, but it's too late. You know, when you're flying, you learn that you've only got seconds before you're into something you can't control. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So, uh, so there's val there's validity in this, but it's, but the bigger picture at Boeing, 
um, the, the, six months or eight months from now, uh, we won't even be thinking about it. Yep. And the stock, the stock, you'll see it on the chart. And um, to what degree? I don't know. You, every, I'll let somebody else speculate on that. No, I'm but, inclined to agree with th you. This is, the, this is the time you buy when everybody's telling you the same story. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, unlike the uh, Green New Deal and what they'd like you to believe, uh, really, we're going to be uh, using airplanes to get around on the planet for the indefinite future. There's just no Well, I was really excited that. about that Green Deal. When I read yeah. that they're going to stop <laughs> animal flatula. Yeah, well, that's a great that, thing. That, I just, I realized how important a subject this is when I look daily reading the economic problems around the world. Yeah, what, Jordan, <laughs> and we're going to spend $94 trillion. And, on and what about uh, giving the uh, those who, who can work or those who are unable or unwilling to work, we'll just give them money, right? Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, Switzerland's tried it. Norway, a few, number of countries so have tried well. it. It hasn't worked. <laughs> it's been tried all over the place. Venezuela, <laughs> you know, socialism, it's a less than perfect system. And yet, uh, you know, <laughs> this is the kind of madness that we have to deal with. So no wonder there's de-dollarization. Uh, you know, that, that's it, absolutely the point um, on this, Kerry, is the rest of the world is looking us at us because they get American media news coming out. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they have completely lost respect for our sanity right now. <laughs> and if they sanity? have to rely on the U.S. government for making good, hard decisions gordon what sanity <laughs> you know yeah what sanity so yeah. it, it there, there's a lot of concerns ev everywhere but from an investor standpoint just turn off the news turn it off turn off the, and, and and do your homework go back to the fundamentals because there are trust me there are a lot of opportunities out there mm-hmm yeah. And, and and the tougher things, times got. My grandfather, I told you the story, my, my grandfather made all his money during the Great Depression. Yeah, mine too. And mine uh, that's too. what it was, the, it was the worst of time, but to him, it was the best of times. Oh, I, I know. I, my, if you recall, yeah. he was, uh, everybody the was, couldn't cities. feed their horses. And he yes. was buying people's horses to save the horses. Turned out he'd make a fortune because he was shipping them all uh, <laughs> to the big cities to draw the milk carts. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> but, great. Great story. And, all, and, and his money always smelled, it was always damp and, smel and smelled, smelled of like mildew. <laughs> but he was the only one with even mildew money. <laughs> hey, well, just a, an aside and then we'll go is during the Great Depression, if you had a hundred dollar bill, you couldn't get change. You couldn't go to a bank and get change. And there were people who would buy it from you for like 93 to $96 and take that 4% as a, as a service charge. That's six, four to 6%. So that's what it, deflation is really like. And we could well see it again. I think they'll deflate before they inflate, but uh, there's always the debt jubilee. Let's not forget that. Anyway, Gordon, uh, website, how do we connect with you? Oh, thank you very much, Kerry. Uh, Appreciate that. Um, um, our site, primary site is Mata SII. That's M-A-T-A-S-I-I dot com. And uh, we have a YouTube channel for various things that we do. Uh, remembering we're just, we're primarily traders. 